Hey everybody, I'm back. Colin Weaver, the IT Dojo CISSP questions of the day. Each time I come at you, I bring you two questions to help you continue to prep for your CISSP exam. Let's go ahead and jump right in. You need to reduce the likelihood that an unauthorized person can piggyback their way into your data center. My question for you is, which of the items that I'm gonna show you is the best way to ensure that? Choice number one says that you can reduce the chances of piggybacking by implementing retina scanners. Um, no, uh, you're gonna prevent people from getting into the facility by using a retina scanner, but if I roll up on the door and there's a retina scanner and I use, and I scan, have my retina scan and the door opens and then somebody walks in behind me, then I don't really see how the retina scanner helped to reduce the likelihood that was gonna take place. It's certainly gonna reduce the likelihood of unauthorized access, but it's not gonna help you really as it pertains to piggybacking. So again, make, most piggybacking scenarios are gonna result from user apathy. So, um, you know, we're just, people are holding the door for each other and not really paying attention to the security of the, of the environment. And this isn't really gonna help me. So let's keep looking and see if we can find a better answer choice. How about choice number two, security awareness training? Ooh, we like security awareness training. We like to make people, you know, smart about security and to be aware of what piggybacking is and how piggybacking is gonna occur and, and what we should do when we encounter it. All those things are true. Um, so this answer has potential, but I wanna look at the other answer choices and see if there's something better because we're trying to go in and say, which is the, is the best way at reducing or preventing piggybacking. So let's, let's keep going. Choice number three, let's do some magnetically locked doors with pin pad access. No, okay, the door's locked, that's great. You have to have a pen to be able to open the door, that's great, but once a legitimate authorized person types a pen in to unlock the door and then the door is open, then you're right back into a piggybacking scenario and the fact that the door was locked and controlled with a pen doesn't really prevent anybody from piggybacking in, so not gonna be the right answer choice here. How about fingerprint activated locks? Same problem as the previous answer. Yep, the door's locked, it's under fingerprint-based control, so you have some good biometric authentication there. But again, I come up, scan my fingerprint, open the door, and now somebody piggybacks in behind me. So that didn't really help. The last answer choice is a man trap. And this is actually the answer choice that I'm looking for. Now, if you didn't get this question right, it's probably because you chose security awareness training over a man trap. And security awareness training is certainly ground zero when it comes to trying to reduce the opportunity for people to do piggybacking or to make people aware of it and train people on what it looks like and how to respond to it and you know in the way that we should do you know ingress and egress particularly in certain areas of the facility but uh, all the training in the world isn't going to address the issues that you have with the user who's apathetic about their role in the process of security if you want to have the most uh, significant solution the best solution for reducing or eliminating uh, piggybacking, a man trap is a better solution. I am not saying that you are not supposed to do security awareness training because you are, but if you want to go in and back that up with something that's really going to uh, give you a much more secure scenario, then a man trap is going to be the one to do it. And there's a whole bunch of different choices in the world of man traps. And man traps can be very expensive, but if you're trying to control access to your data center, an investment in making sure that unauthorized people aren't going to be able to get into that data center is well worth it because the cost of one breach could easily be equivalent to or greater than the cost of the man trap itself. So uh, consider that. And then there's some links I put in the descriptions down below that kind of go in and talk about that a little bit more. You know, man traps overall from the CISSP exam perspective are a pretty simple concept, but there's there's actually quite a bit of decisioning and stuff that can go into them. And it's, it's more detailed than we really need from a CISSP perspective, but it's certainly something that you should be aware of if you're in a position where these are the kinds of decisions that you're gonna need to be making. Let's go ahead and move on to question number two. It says, which of the following is a protocol that is commonly used to uh, query and modify attributes of objects that are stored in a hierarchical directory? And there's your answer choices, a bunch of acronyms, protocols. Pick the right one and then we will talk them all through. Choice number one says, RADIUS, the Remote Authentication Dial-In User Service. Uh, no. RADIUS would be broadly categorized as what most people would refer to as a AAA server, authentication, authorization, and accounting. Uh, RADIUS does not do any sort of updating of records or querying of records or anything like that. RADIUS is there to authenticate you, provide you with authorizations based on that authentication, and then keep a record of what it is that you do in the form of accounting. So definitely not the answer choice that we're looking for here. 
LDAP, the Lightweight Directory Access Protocol, very much so, that's the right answer. LDAP is a protocol that allows you to go in and interact with a uh, hierarchical database or hierarchical directory, and uh, the most notable of which was the original X500 standard, and the other place where most of us encounter LDAP in our daily lives is in the world of Active Directory, because you use LDAP to talk to Active Directory. And uh, it can be used for the purposes of authentication, even though Microsoft doesn't do it that way, they use Kerberos, but it can also be used to query the, uh, the directory, get information from the directory, as well as make updates and changes to the directory. And uh, very widely used, and LDAP's what we're looking for here. Let's go ahead and look at the other choices, just to make sure we didn't pick the wrong one. We didn't. But uh, Kerberos, Kerberos is not a protocol that's used for querying a directory or modifying a directory. So no, Kerberos is an authentication protocol that you can use to prove who you are, but uh, that's the extent of what Kerberos is gonna do for you. Tactix Plus, nope, Tactix Plus falls into the same boat as Radius, whereas uh, Radius is a AAA server, as is Tactix Plus. Uh, they just do what they do in different ways. You know, Radius is UDP-based, Tactix Plus is TCP-based, uh, Tactix Plus has wider protocol support, it can support full packet encryption of the Tactix-related data, um, and uh, Radius does not, at least not full packet encryption, but um, uh, yeah, those are some of the big deals. And then I guess the other big one, again, which is probably more information than you need from a CISSP perspective, is that Tactix Plus separates authentication and authorization. Uh, you can be authenticated without being authorized, and the authorization can come later. Radius uh, does authentication and authorization at the same time. So at the moment that you're authenticated, you're also provided your authorizations. Tactix Plus can separate those out, and that, that creates lots of, lots of versatility for Tactix Plus that, uh, in my experience, people haven't always fully leveraged the way that they could or should. But too much information. Um, so, but no, right here, not the right answer. Then the last answer choice, still also not correct. LDAP was the right answer here. Uh, server message blocks, uh, SMB is the way we do file sharing in uh, Microsoft systems, uh, although we can certainly use it in Linux and things like that and even uh, Mac OS. But uh, SMB is pretty much universally associated with Microsoft and Microsoft's file sharing mechanism. So not the right answer. Tech, uh, excuse me, LDAP is what we're looking for today. All right. Two more questions, complete. Hope these are helping you. Hope you crush that exam when it comes exam time. I'll see you next time with two more questions. See you.